Shalom, Goyam. A while back, I bought a Galil ARM parts kit from Apex. The listing had a few different options with it, like a 5.56 barrel for a discount, or a torch cut receiver, mags, etc. I checked the torch cut receiver box and ordered a kit. The kit was 1,170 shekels, that's like 350 American money, and the receiver was 17 shekels, like $5. My original intention was to make a 5.45 Galil. I have shitloads of 5.45 in it. It would be a lot easier and cheaper for me to mill the metric threads off of a receiver stub, you know, stuff an AK-74 barrel into it and just re-weld it, than to get an actual legit receiver. There would also need to be a bit of modification to the locking lug point for the uh, front of the mag, since Galo mags and AK-74 mags are different on the front end. The whole thing would just be easier to accomplish if the receiver was in several pieces at first. Well, the kit shows up, and like a kid on the first night of Hanukkah, I tear into it, hoping for chocolate coins. And also like the kid whose Uncle Shmuley and Aunt Miriam got him another dreidel, I was disappointed. Apex had made a mistake, and sent me a barrel instead of a torch-cut receiver. I've heard Apex has great customer service, but I had never had to use it before. I was going to call in bitch, but never got around to it. I was just going to buy a torch cut Gillow receiver on my own then, but they've been out of stock everywhere for as long as I've been looking. So the kit sat for probably a year or so. This winter has been particularly hard on me, just like every single other winter I've ever lived through. I hate where I live, but I'll never move. The 50 cal is progressing. I don't want you guys to think I gave up on it. And the single shot 545 is going great. But I was getting burnout on those two projects, so I decided to do something else for a while. Typically, I would buy another AK parts kit from wherever and build another AK and throw it in the safe with all the others. But if you've tried to buy anything gun-related in the last nine months or so, you may have noticed things aren't always in stock. Or things are marked up to such an extent that buying them is prohibitively expensive. I am not spending six million dollars on an AKM parts kit. But I remembered the Galil and the free barrel it came with. Fuck it, I ordered a Tordort 80% and dove in. The blueprints Tordort has on the website have some weirdness to them. They aren't bad prints. I followed them close enough and they worked fine. But some things are just odd. First and foremost, the receiver was warped. I didn't think to take footage of it, but... But looking at the prints, you're supposed to zero off the top rail and uh, from the front of it. The front was fine, but the top rail was bowed in about 15 thousandths in the middle. Obviously, when Tordort had heat treated it, it had warped. When you get metal red hot and quench it, you can expect a little bit of warping. That isn't Tordort's fault, it's just physics. But the blueprints, the cutout for the bit of the safety lever, doesn't have a length. It doesn't tell you how far to cut this. Are you just supposed to wing it? I did. And the dimension of the hole. Does anybody have a 730 seconds end mill just offhand? My guy with the mill didn't. By the way, I drilled a 730 seconds hole 361 thousandths from the center point of the 10 millimeter hole and just filed the edges down. It was at like 45 degrees though, not the 43 the print says. It works fine. I also wondered the point of these two dimensions here. All the important stuff works off of the rivet hole that comes already drilled. In spite of what you may think, I don't actually have any idea what I'm doing. If anybody was formally trained in drafting, let me know what these two were for. But yeah, I got everything good enough. The receiver's fine. I went to put the barrel on, though. I think the barrel's from Green Mountain. I'm not positive since it had no markings, and Apex didn't say anything about where it came from. But I do know that Green Mountain does make Galil barrels, and typically when you get a barrel and a kit from places like Apex, it's a Green Mountain. The barrel was already chambered with extractor cut and handguard retainer cuts on both sides of the barrel, weirdly enough. Why would they do that? I thought this was going to be just a drop-in barrel all ready to go, just torque it to whatever, and it'll already be head-spaced and everything, but no. Here I've got it hand-tight and the extractor cut is at 3 and 6 o'clock, instead of 12 and 3. Torquing a barrel doesn't turn at 45 degrees. Something was wrong. 
Either Tordort had fucked the dimensions of the receiver, or Green Mountain had fucked the dimensions of the barrel. I had bought a Tantal barrel from Green Mountain before. Yeah, one of those with the incorrectly cut barrel journals. So I decided the blame lies with them. I have bought several hundred feet of rifled barrel blanks from Green Mountain and never had any problems with them. But the two barrels I got where they did more than just drill and rifle them, they fucked up. The fuck ever, I could fix this. We're in the middle of a pandemic that's reaching show-up proportions. I don't have the luxury of buying a correct barrel. What needs to happen is that I need to shave just a bit off the shoulder of the barrel so it will be properly timed. So the extractor cut and handguard cut will both be in the correct positions. Green Mountain sure would have saved me some time if they didn't bother with those two things. I could have cut those myself easily. The only thing I would have trouble with would have been the metric threads. Everything else I could handle. So I got it set up in the lathe and carefully, ever so slightly, little by little, took about two thousandths off of the shoulder of the barrel. After every pass, I would test fit the receiver to see how I was doing. Now, I know what you're thinking. Nice sleeves, idiot. You're going to get yourself killed. I've seen the Chinese gore threads. I know. I rolled them up when the machine was actually running. You should just be happy that I didn't turn the machine on the opposite way to unthread the receiver faster. Just trust me, don't do that. When I was making the 44 Mosin, I was a very thick layer of grease, oil, and feculence away from tearing my index finger off. I'm learning as I go, and doing better every time. And here we go, L'chaim, it fits. One thing I didn't account for, though. The amount of metal I took off the shoulder moved the face of the barrel further into the receiver. The bolt wouldn't close, the chamber was now too short. I took a file to the face of the barrel until it cleared the bolt. Extractor cut was still good, and little by little I used my 556 chamber reamer to take just a little bit off of the chamber until it was head spaced again. We're golden. I test cycled a few rounds though. Ugh. That's no good. The barrel had a slight chamfer on it to help with feeding. You know, to keep the rounds from doing this. I had removed too much of it, again, because of the shoulder. So back out on the lathe again, got it all lined up and ready to go, set my compound to like 10 degrees or something. I was just going to face it off and then cut a very slight angle trying to replicate the one that was already there. My lathe is an old south bend. This lever here actuates the automatic feed, or whatever it's called. This lever here controls which way the feed goes. When it's down, it goes across the face of the part. When it's up, it goes along the diameter. I was just cutting the face, so I set it to here and... Oh, shit. I stood in silence for a moment in disbelief. What have I done? I've ruined it. Oh, fuck. Oh. Damn it. What the fuck? Nah, fuck that. Let's roll with it. I polished it up, called it a night. Looking at it closer, the back of the case sticks out about 150 thousandths from the flat part of the face, meaning the base of the case is unsupported for an even larger distance than normal because of the enormous chamfer I had put there. Is this even safe? I wasn't sure. But wasn't going to let not knowing stop me. I torqued it down to something, the, it fit the handguard things, and the hole for the retainer was too far forward because of everything wrong, so I took the chainsaw file to it until it fit. Installed the gas block, made a mark, removed the gas block, drilled a 1 16th inch gas port, and then reinstalled the gas block and the pins, and we're good to go. Only thing left to do is test fire. So I get it out into the woods, stand cautiously behind a tree, and fire it one-handed. It worked. Like a charm. My fuck-up had given me the most reliable feeding galil that had ever been made. Examining a few cases, the first thing that I noticed was each one had a dent in it. 
The case is getting thrown into something and bouncing, which explains all the weird ejection patterns. All the cases were thrown forward instead of sideways. The case hits the ejector and the receiver and then hits the carrier right here and bounces forward at like 1 o'clock from the gun. That's no big deal at all, and I'm not going to do anything about it. The second thing I noticed was the very slight ring of frosting on the base of all the cartridges. That's indicative of high pressures. Usually that area is supported by the chamber. I am potentially on the very edge of this being unsafe. If the case was any more unsupported, I could run into issues like bulging or rupturing, which is no good. But all of these look acceptable, and I'm not going to worry about it. This was a fun build. I like Galil's, but people always talk them up like they're God's chosen rifles and just so perfect. I'm not a fan of the upswept charging handle. If you don't grab it just right, you smack your finger into the dust cover or the rear sight and it hurts. The main spring with the extra long latch for the dust cover is a pain to get on too because of the length. You need to balance the end of it on the flat spot inside the receiver, then put the cover on, and then cycle the bolt to move it into place. The safety is very easy to bump with your thumb too, either accidentally setting it to full auto or if it's like mine, setting it to depress the disconnector and cause failure to fires because the hammer follows through with the bolt. The separate springs for the hammer and trigger are a fucking pain to install and you can't install a, a flat retainer for the axis pins because of the su thumb safety, meaning you have to bend your own wire retainer. Most of the Galil's features just end up being more shit to deal with over a standard AK. I think a very clever salesman sold a bunch of problems and called them features. Maybe that's why the Israelis stopped using Galil's in any serious capacity almost 20 years ago. Who knows? Right, what did I do with all those bad cartridges that I had dinged up whenever I was testing it? Well, I did the same thing I always did.